Hey everybody, and welcome to this video lecture, which gives you a very brief snapshot of California's floral diversity and provides a foundation for us to build on in the coming weeks. California is the most biodiverse state in the USA. By area, it's the third largest state in the country and represents just 3% of the country's land mass. But it has the greatest number of native plant and vertebrate species and the largest number of single state endemic species. Unfortunately, it also has the greatest percentage of threatened species, which at just over 31% of the total number of species is the second largest percentage in the country after Hawaii. The main threats to these species and California's biodiversity are habitat loss and invasive plants and other invasive organisms. California's floral diversity is the richest in the USA. The total number of native vascular plant species in the state varies according to which source you use and which definition of California you use. But the numbers quoted range from around 4,200 to around 5,000 full species, plus many more subtaxa. To give these numbers some perspective, Great Britain, which is somewhat similar to California in area and latitudinal spread, albeit more northerly, has less than 1,400 native plant species, about a third of California's native flora. The popular representation of California's flora is often in terms of superlatives, the tallest, the largest, and the oldest. California is home to the tallest trees in the world, coast redwoods or sequoia sempervirens, which grow to over 300 feet tall. They're not too shabby either in terms of lifespan, with the ability to live up to 2,000 years. California is also home to the world's largest tree by volume, the giant redwood, sequoia dendron giganteum, which is a close relative of the coast redwood. And thirdly, California is also home to Great Basin bristlecone pines in the eastern Sierra that are the oldest living organisms in the world, with some of them having been alive for over 5,000 years. While California is popularly known for its three tallest, largest and oldest tree species, around a third of the state's native vascular plants are actually the smallest ones that live for the least amount of time, annuals. In the photo here, you can see one of our local Santa Cruz County endemic annuals, the tiny herbaceous monkey flower, Diplocus ratanii, which is found in the Santa Cruz Sandhills ecosystem and barely grows to two inches tall. Not only does California have a particularly high floral species richness, it also has a particularly high level of floral endemism, with more than a third of the native flora being endemic. That's around 1,400 species. Included in these endemics is the yellow bush lupin, Lupinus arboreus, which you can see in the photos here, and which you can see growing locally in coastal scrub and coastal strand plant communities. California's floral diversity has, of course, evolved over millions of years. In a 1965 paper written by University of California evolutionary biologist G. Ledyard Stebbins, and ecologist Jack Major, they made the distinction between paleoendemics and neoendemics. Paleoendemics are plants which evolved prior to the development of California's Mediterranean type climate during an era which was much wetter than today. These plants include coast redwoods, giant redwoods, Monterey pine and Monterey cypress, and other plants. Their closest living relatives are usually found now in temperate forests in wetter regions of Northern California and Asia, and along the fog belt region of California's coast. Neoendemics have evolved with a Mediterranean type climate that began to develop in California between four to seven million years ago. These plants include genera that have the greatest number of their species concentrated in California, such as the woody shrubs, Arctostaphylus and Ceanothus, and herbaceous plants such as Clarkia and Madia. You should see several species from all four of these genera in our labs this semester. 
The highest number of California's neo-endemic plant species are found on the central coast, so we're in a fabulous area here for botanizing. Here in Santa Cruz County, which is the second smallest county in the state, there are 1,038 documented native vascular plant species, which represents around 20% of the state's native flora right here on our doorstep. A snapshot of California's floral diversity wouldn't be complete without mentioning that the state is also home to over 1,100 non-native plant species which have naturalized in open spaces. Some of these plants were deliberately introduced by successive generations of immigrants as food plants and as ornamentals. Some of them have been accidental introductions, hitching a ride, for example, on the fur or hair of livestock that was brought over by immigrants. Around 200 of these naturalized non-natives have become invasive. And as mentioned at the beginning of this lecture, Invasive plants, along with other invasive organisms, are one of the most significant threats to California's ecosystems. Examples of some of the most invasive plants locally are pampas grass, ice plant, acacia, blue gum, French broom, English ivy and Cape ivy, all of which unfortunately you can see on the, on the Cabrillo campus. And we'll talk more about invasive plants in a later module. The rich diversity of California's flora and fauna and its ecosystems is one reason the California Floristic Province has been designated as a World Biodiversity Hotspot. There are currently 37 biodiversity hotspots worldwide, most of which are in tropical areas. They represent just 2.4% of the Earth's land surface, but support nearly 60% of the world's plant, bird, mammal, reptile and amphibian species, and 43% of these species as endemics. One of the criterion for being designated a biodiversity hotspot is that 0.5% or 1500 of a region's vascular plants must be endemic. So with 33% of its plants as endemics, California certainly more than meets this criterion. On the surface, it would appear to be a huge honor to be living in a biogeographic region that has such world-renowned biodiversity. But the second criterion for receiving a World Biodiversity Hotspot designation is that the region has to have lost at least 70% of its original primary natural vegetation, and that the remainder is threatened with destruction. This Biodiversity Hotspot designation is a reminder to us not just of the breadth of California's biodiversity, but also the vulnerability of the region's natural ecosystems. And it's a wake-up call to the importance of protecting what remains. Building sustainability into our, into our agricultural and horticultural enterprises and cultivated landscapes is just one small component of the protective measures we can take. So let's quickly summarize this lecture now. California is the most biodiverse region in the USA and one of the most biodiverse in the world. It's popularly known for being home to the tallest, oldest and largest vascular plants in the world. But much of its floral diversity is actually represented by herbaceous annuals. Two of the most important threats to the richness of California's biodiversity are habitat loss and invasive organisms. And these, together with the fact that the region has lost over 70% of its original primary vegetation, has resulted in the California Floristic Province being designated a World Biodiversity Hotspot. That's the end of this video lecture. Thanks for listening. Head back to Canvas to continue with this module now.